Nixies is bringing us the port for Horizon Forbidden West, and that is very exciting because they have a very good track record of porting PlayStation games to PC and supporting all of the big PC features, like we just saw there advertising the, um, uh, the fact that it has all of the big upscalers. We've got DLSS, FSR, and XESS. Do note that it mentions DLSS 3 while not mentioning FSR 3. So unclear if both frame generation technologies will be in, but we do have all three major upscalers. And it did also advertise ultra-wide support. Uh, we have seen it mentioning direct storage support. And so in general, this is looking like it should have all of the big features and technologies that you'd want in a PC port. Nixies has a good track history, and we are now getting the official system requirements. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me is you do need a lot of storage space here, 150 gigabyte SSD space, and it does specifically state SSD. Although usually when that's the case, it's not that you can't try to install the game on a hard disk drive, it's just it's probably not tested quality assured to be a great experience. Again, it's relying on direct storage technology, things like that. So uh, anyway, just saying it does specifically state 150 gigabytes of SSD space, you know, operating system, all of that. Nothing seems too crazy on the RAM requirements, although it does say 16 gigabytes across the board. There is no mention of going lower than that. Again, maybe you can, but that is the official requirements. Also, can I just say that in addition to Nixie's doing such a nice job with their PC ports, usually on the technology support, all of that, look at this system requirements chart. Can we just marvel at them doing what you want? I mean, obviously we need to, you know, hopefully get the game and test out that it's accurate and all of that. But look, you've got a variety of settings presets that are clearly labeled. You've got the resolution and frame rates that they're hitting, and they both show 1440p60 as well as 4K30 at the high preset. You know, and obviously, you know, there's no way you can do a table of like everything. But um, this gives a lot of good points for us to kind of reference from to get an idea of what the performance is going to look for. Also, uh, what I found interesting when they said that um, to ensure the game runs on a wide variety of PC hardware, including portable gaming devices, we've included a variety of presets, all that. Anyway, uh, I'm just saying that even though the system requirement chart doesn't specifically list anything like the Steam Deck or anything like that, um, I am finding it interesting that they say to ensure the game runs, uh, you know, including portable gaming devices. Uh, that's good news, I would say, as far as them at least having that in mind and maybe having tested it out. But again, no guarantees on what sort of performance you'll get. But this does look very, very scalable. I have no issues with a game taking a powerful GPU to max stuff out at 4K60, and that seems to be what we're seeing here with the 4080 and the 7900 XT, as long as you can then scale the experience down to still be compatible with lower end hardware, and that also seems to be what we're seeing here. Sure, 720p 30 at very low settings is probably not the ideal way to play the game, but it's looking like they're at least ensuring that you could do that on a GTX 1650 4 gigabyte or 5500 XT 4 gigabyte. So that is showing that also specifically stating that if you turn everything down to low, a 4 gigabyte graphics card can probably get the job done. And I'm also not seeing any evidence, at least in the system requirements, of this game being massively uh, VRAM hungry because they are pairing the 3070 with the 6800, which have similar performance levels, although, you know, the NVIDIA GPU is 8 gigabyte versus the 6800 being 16 gigabyte, and they are saying that the both of them should be fine for high settings, uh, 1440p 60 or 4K 30. Now, again, it's a system requirements chart. This isn't full benchmarking or testing or anything like that, but this is what we'll have to uh, go with for now. Are you guys interested in me actually benchmarking this game when it comes out? Uh, sometimes when bigger games do uh, get PC releases, I, I will take a look at them on a variety of hardware if I have time. 
Uh, and then also we're seeing the uh, the 3060 and 5700 from AMD paired up here as recommended for a 1080p 60 medium experience. And I think, you know, last generation 60 class product for 1080p medium 60 sounds pretty reasonable here. I'm gonna dive more into the details of, uh, okay, let's say your GPU isn't on this list and you don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of these GPUs and your GPU and how all of those compare. In just a second, I'll get to that. Like, how can you figure out how your, uh, your stuff kind of pairs up here? But I think before I do that, let's do a quick mention on CPUs because in some console games, um, I've noticed that they can become CPU limited kind of uh, unexpectedly or, or you know, uh, not run as well on the CPU as you, as you might wish, but I'm actually very happy to see that that doesn't look like the case, at least again from this system requirements chart. That doesn't mean everything's always gonna be perfect until we test it out, right? But uh, the highest end CPUs they list here are an i7-11700 or a Ryzen 7 5700X. Now granted, that's only saying 60 FPS, uh, you know, guaranteed on that <laughs> from the system requirements chart. Uh, so higher refresh rate experiences, I don't know, we'd have to see. But that's not crazy. We're not talking, you know, your 13900K, 14900K, you know, 7800X3D or anything like that. We're a couple generations old, you know, high-end chips, but, but from a few generations ago. Uh, the 11700 is an 8-core, 16-thread chip uh, from, uh, looks like, 2021. And the uh, 5700X from AMD is 8-core, uh, 16-thread chip, uh, chip from, uh, looks like, 2022. So we are talking a few years old now on, on that high-end hardware, so nothing absolutely crazy. And then they're also saying you should be able to get, you know, high settings, 60 FPS, on, uh, on a 9700i7 or a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is jumping back another generation. The i7 9700 doesn't even have hyper-threading. That's eight core, eight thread, uh, and that's from 2019. And the 3700X is eight core, 16 thread, but again, not the newest chip in the world. Uh, this one's looking like, yeah, a 2019 chip. And then it kind of pairs back even further from there. Uh, the uh, 8600 and uh, 3600 Ryzen's uh, are, again, kind of just uh, pretty close to what we're seeing um, actually from, from these settings here. These are all fairly close-ish. I mean, the 8600 is losing some more cores. The 8600 is only six core, six thread rather than eight core, eight thread on that 9700, losing some clock speed and all that. And again, that's a 2018 chip, it looks like and your 3600 dropping to a six core 12 thread from a similar generation and time frame. Um, so in other words, I'm not seeing any evidence that this is crazy CPU hungry. And if we drop down to the 8100 and uh, i3 and the Ryzen 3 1300X, I mean, the Ryzen 3 1300X is only four core four threads. And that is from 2017. Now again, at, at the i3 8100 is also four core four thread. Now that's a newer chip at 2017, but again, fairly low end for the time. Now that's only targeting 30 FPS, but like still, I'm just saying nothing looks absolutely insane on the CPU requirements uh, and that's nice to see. So let's get into the last thing, which is basically, okay, the GPU requirements. First of all, I'm really hoping that none of this is like including upscaling in the system requirements list. There's no evidence that that's the case but also some games do just do that and they don't tell you. So I will kind of throw that out as a little bit of a caveat, um, but assuming uh, uh, that isn't the case, I, I think none of, like I said, none of this looks too crazy, but then what if your GPU isn't on this list? How do you tell how yours stacks up? Uh, well, I really like the tech power up relative performance chart for that purpose. It's not obviously going to be as detailed of a review as looking up individual graphics card reviews. But the problem is when you look up individual graphics card reviews, you will get um, you know whatever GPUs happen to be included in that testing. Whereas you know the relative performance chart here has 
almost any GPU you could think of. And sometimes you can actually manually search for GPUs that aren't even on this list. So I really like that this is here. But that being said, this is giving you kind of a ballpark figure. Individual games will perform differently. Uh, so this is by no means a guarantee. Some games will get tripped up by VRAM, so they, they're showing, or, or by, uh, you know, just newer, uh, newer DirectX features, uh, you know, ray tracing, all sorts of things uh, can complicate this list, but it is simple and gets you a pretty good ballpark figure of roughly where your GPU will stack up. And honestly, system requirements charts are really only kind of giving you a ballpark sort of figure anyway. All right, so the 1650 and the 5500 uh, XT are our minimum GPUs for 720p 30 FPS. One thing I'm noticing here is that the 5500 XT uh, is generally more powerful here than what we're seeing from that GTX 1650, where there's actually, that's only reaching about three quarters of the performance, but that tells me that they're basically testing these out probably, right? Confirming that, yeah, you can play the game at absolute minimum 30 FPS, 720p, which means that other GPUs in this range here, right? If you're somewhere in that range, you're probably also able to get that type of an experience. Again, they are listing four gigabytes of VRAM, so if some of these GPUs were less than that, perhaps that could be a bit of an issue, right? So, uh, you know, you're, you're somewhere in that ballpark. This is above a 1050 Ti, uh, so, you know, if, if you're kind of hanging out down in that range, you know, a GTX 960, you're, you're below the minimum requirements for the game. Again, you could fire it up and see what happens, but don't expect a great experience, right? Uh, if you're on something like a 1660, uh, you know, you're, you're above the minimum requirement here. All right, so then if we're looking up at the next spec, if you're looking for a 3060 or a 5700, Let's look at, okay, we're going from 720p 30 v minimum, very low settings, jumping up to medium settings, increasing resolution, and doubling the frame rate. Uh, what does it take to get there, right? So if we take this 5500 XT as kind of our baseline and kind of scroll up from here, we're now, uh, basically you're gonna be increasing frame rate and or settings and or resolution as you get to GPUs uh, like, uh, you know, the 1660 Ti being 30% faster, an RTX 3050, 32% faster, that kind of stuff. And now you're getting into the 5700 range where we're seeing 60% faster. This is somewhat in the ballpark of like a RX 6600, uh, which you can buy right now brand new for about $190 to the $200 range. Uh, so if you just want to get in the door, um, you know, that's kind of getting you into that sort of a... Uh, 1080p 60 FPS type of experience with that RX 5700 class performance. Uh, the RTX 3060 itself, I'm assuming they mean the 12 gigabyte version since that's the original 3060 that most people know about. Again, that's, uh, you know, 78% faster than a 5500 XT. Let's go ahead and now set, set the 3060 as kind of the baseline here. So if the 3060 is the baseline, 1080p 60 FPS medium settings. So you're probably gonna be getting similar performance if you have something like an RTX 2070, a 2060 Super, an RX 6600. A 2060 is slower, but not massively so. It only has six gigabytes of VRAM, but if the game can run on four, you can probably tweak settings to make it happen. A GTX 1080 isn't even light years apart, although sometimes on older architectures, you'll see them underperform in newer games. Um, just due to, uh, you know, not being as good at, you know, supporting the full, the full feature set of kind of some newer games would take advantage of things like that. Again, doing a little bit better if you're on something like a 6600 XT. What if you have an Intel GPU? Well, they are listing XCSS support in the game, so that's promising because, uh, but Intel GPUs can be inconsistent. But this is around an ARC A750 class of performance. A770 a little bit above, but still in the same kind of ballpark. But like I said, Intel performance in games can be very inconsistent. So sometimes they perform where they should in this general area. Sometimes they, they outperform. They do much better than expected. And sometimes they drastically underperform. So uh, a little hard to say for sure, but they, they would be roughly in this class. And the fact that the game supports XCSS at launch would make me at least somewhat hopeful that they're testing it out and supporting ARC GPUs. Uh, if you're looking for that 1440p 60 high settings experience, you would be jumping up to a 3070 or a 6800. Uh, so that would kind of push us into, um, okay, so from our 3060, 
If we're jumping up to a 3070 class of performance, that's a 50% performance bump. And again, the RX 6800 is a little bit uh, more powerful than that and has more VRAM, but again, some games favor a AMD versus NVIDIA architecture. So I'm not saying it's necessarily more powerful, but it's, it's a similar ballpark of performance. Again, we're just getting kind of rough ideas, right? So 1440p60. So if you're kind of in between a 3060 and this uh, 3070 class of performance, you're, you're kind of in between that 1080p60 medium and the 1440p60 high. So that would be cards like the 6700 XT is kind of living in that kind of middle ground, the, seven, the, the 40, uh, 4060, the 7600 XT. You're probably doing a little bit better than that 1080p60 medium. Maybe you're turning things up a bit. Maybe you're going up to 1440p60 high, but you need to kick on upscaling maybe at the quality setting. Uh, that kind of stuff is kind of what I'd expect there. And then again, it does scale up pretty high. If you want 4K 60, you're going a 4080 or 7900 XT. I do find it kind of interesting they paired the 7900 XT, not XTX, with the 4080, because usually the XTX is more of the um, uh, kind of rasterized performance match for a 4080, but it's all kind of, like I said, kind of ballpark figures here. So if we did want to scroll up from like the 3070 baseline for 1440p 60 high, uh, jumping up to the um, you know 4K 60, you kind of scroll through all of these GPUs as you'd be increasing frame rate or increasing settings, um, and then possibly popping up to that uh, 4K resolution where the 4080 does just about double the performance of a 3070. So that is asking a, a lot to jump up to the maxed out settings 4K 60. So anyway, that's what we're kind of looking at there. Hopefully you guys found this video useful and or interesting. Uh, if you guys are excited for the game, let me know. Uh, I, I'm also possibly interested in benchmarking it when it comes out. Honestly, I kind of judge that a bit based on these system requirements videos. If they seem to have a lot of interest, that can kind of tell me whether there'd be a lot of interest in taking the time to benchmark the game when it releases. I hope everyone has an excellent day. Huge thank you to viewers, subscribers, commenters, especially channel members who click the join button down below to directly support the channel financially. That is absolutely huge. And thank you for that. Although I totally understand not everybody's in a financial position to do that. And that is perfectly fine. Channel members do get like a member badges on their comments. They're easier for me to find the comments uh, and read them. And uh, I also do have some early access to videos and the occasional uh, members exclusive kind of behind the scenes updates kind of things. Um, and uh, yeah, hope everyone has an excellent day. I'm excited because I'm, I'm getting at least a two hour delay for snow for teaching and uh, we'll see if we get a full cancellation. So pretty excited about that. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> teachers like snow days too, guys. Anyway, <laughs> have a good day, everybody.